This is a lesson for the second day of chapter 10, section 2, titled Simplifying Radicals. And so what we're going to end up seeing today is that we'll have fractions underneath the radical signs, or we might have two radical signs with a fraction. So let's take a look at the first problem. It says, what is the simplified form of each radical expression? Well, what we can do is if we have just one radical sign, we can treat this as two separate radicals. And we can take the square root of 64 and the square root of 49 separately. And so I see the square root of 64 is 8, the square root of 49 is 7, so 8 sevenths would be our answer. Over here, what we can do is we can do some division first. And so 49 and 64 had no common factors, but 4 does go into 36. Even though those are both perfect squares, we can simplify it. And so that's what I'm going to do with this problem here. I'm going to simplify this expression. And so I see 4 goes into 36 9 times. And then I've got some a's left over, too. So this 1a here is going to cancel out one of the a's on the bottom of the fraction, leaving me with just a squared. So I can now write it as two separate radicals. And I can go ahead and take the square root of both of those perfect squares, and I'm left with 3 over a. On the next one, the same sort of thing. Reduce the fraction first. I see that both of these can be divided by 2. So I can divide by 2x, actually, divide by 2x, because I can take out an x from both the top and the bottom. So what that leaves me with is 4x squared over 25. And I'm going to keep those in two separate radical signs there. And then I can go ahead and take the square roots. And so that leaves me with 2x over 5 as the answer. The next one, same sort of thing. No common factors here, but we do have some perfect squares. And so when I take the square root of 25, that's going to make 5. Now, the square root of y to the third, I'm going to treat this as y squared times by the square root of y, because y times y squared makes y to the third, and y squared is a perfect square. So any even exponent will be a perfect square. And down below I have the square root of z squared. So I take the square roots, I've got 5y square roots of y all over z, and that is our answer. So taking a look at the next problem here, I've got th four different problems, and this time I can't do some division. Like, for instance, here, the square root of 7 is not a perfect square. It doesn't go into 3 either. So we're going to do something called rationalize, rationalize the denominator. And so what that means is that we want to make a perfect square in the denominator. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to multiply it by a factor of 1. I'm going to multiply by the square root of 7 over the square root of 7. You see, this is 1. 1 times a number doesn't change the value of that number. And so it doesn't, uh, it's going to stay the same value, but what we're going to end up having is a perfect square in the denominator. You see, I go ahead and multiply straight across, I get the square root of 21. Down below, you see how you get the square root of 49. And that just makes the square root of 21 over 7. You see, this is a rationalized denominator. So now we can actually do the division. We can divide 7 into the approximate of the square root of 21. So on this one, what I'm going to do first is reduce the, uh, take out the perfect square that is in 8. So this is the same thing as saying the square root of 7 over the square root of 4 times by 2 square roots of n. And so I did that because 4 times 2 makes 8, and so it's the same exact number, but now it's a smaller perfect square. So I can go ahead and simplify a little further, square root of 7 over 2 square roots of 2n. So now I'm going to take the 2n and multiply it by itself because that will make it a perfect square. So if I multiply by the square root of 2n over the square root of 2n, that's 1. 1 times a number doesn't change the value. So I'm left with the square root of 14n underneath the radical sign in the numerator, and then down below I'm left with 2 times by 2n. 2n because you see how when I go ahead and multiply that, I get the square root of 4n squared. And you see that's just going to make 2n. So once you multiply by that rationalized denominator, that number that makes it a perfect square, it's going to end up being the same value that's underneath the radical sign. So now I can go ahead and multiply Across, I get 14n, still in the numerator there, and then down below I've got 4n, and that's the answer. You cannot reduce because the 14 and the n are underneath the radical sign where the 4n is not. 
So in this next problem, same sort of thing. I take out the perfect square that's in 18. So I see a 9 goes into 18. So I'm left with 9 squared to 9 over 2m squared to 2m. And still on top is the square root of 5. So the square root of 9 is 3. So this is now the square root of 5 over 3 square roots of 2m. So now I can go ahead and multiply by the square root of 2m. And that will take out that irrational denominator and leave me with the square root of 10m on top of the fraction, because 5 times 2 is 10. And then down below, I've got 3 times by 2m. 2m because, again, the square root of 2m times 2m makes 4m squared. The square root of 4m squared is 2m. So I go ahead and just multiply across. I'm left with the square root of 10m all over 6m. And again, don't try to reduce because the 10m is underneath the radical sign where the 6m is not. On this problem, this is treated as, we could treat it as two separate radicals, the square root of 7s over the square root of 3. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3 to rationalize the denominator. So I'm left with the square root of 21s all over 3. Again, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 makes the square root of 9, which is 3, and that's why I wrote just 3 in the denominator. And let's take a look at the next type of problem, and it's a word problem. It says you're making a mosaic tile or design on a square tabletop. Okay, so a square tabletop, that means all sides are the same. So this side is x, this side is x, all sides are x. So it says you've already covered half of the table with 151 one-inch square tiles. So if half of the area, half area equals uh, equals 150 inches squared, that means that the full area, the area of the entire uh, shape, is going to end up being double. 2 times by 150 inches squared. So that gives me 300 inches squared. So that's the whole area of the table. And so I'll redraw my picture here. So I know that the area, same tabletop, but the area is 300 inches squared. Well, I want to find out what the dimensions of the tabletop are. So I know that the area of a square is just squaring the side lengths. So x squared equals 300. So I'm going to take the square root to find out what that one x value is, and I see a perfect square in there, 100. And then 100 times by 3 makes 300, so that's 10 square roots of 3. And so that is the exact answer. So we'll try fixing that 3 a little bit better. There we go. Inches is the length of the side. And so we would say the dimensions dimensions would end up being 10 square roots of 3 inches by 10 square roots of 3 inches. So then it asks for what is the measure of the diagonal from one corner to the opposite corner of the tabletop. So they're talking about, let's go ahead and redraw what we've got here. They're talking about going from here to here, one corner to one corner. And we know that this is 10 square roots of 3, and this is 10 square roots of 3. And so they want to find out what that length is. Well, if it's a square, that means we've got a right angle. That means the diagonal is going to be the hypotenuse. And so we're going to end up doing this. We're going to do 10 square roots of 3 squared plus 10 square roots of 3 squared. And then that's going to equal x, we'll call it x squared. And so when I do that work, the squaring, you have to square both parts. Squaring 10 makes 100. Squaring the square root of 3 makes just 3, because it makes the square root of 9, which is just 3. So I'll get the same thing for this next value, 100 times by 3. And so when I do this work, it makes 300 plus 300, and that gives me 600. And so 600 equals x squared. So I take the square root of both sides, and I'm left with a number I can take the square root of. See, I can break down 600 to 100 times 6. And the we'll square root of 100 is 10. So that means the diagonal, <coughs> the diagonal is going to end up being 10 square roots of 6 inches. And so those are the types of problems that you're going to see on tonight's assignment. Good luck.